If I had to use a single word, I'd say seismic. It's just staggering what has happened over the last 30 years. Networking, Information Technology Research and Development, or NIDRD, is an interagency program that came about after the passage of the High Performance Computing Act of 1991. Prior to this time, the agencies were mostly siloed, doing their own thing. There was a huge realization that if the United States were to really make a big difference across the globe, that we have to work together. And so it became incumbent on the federal government to bring all of the agencies together. So in the early days of the NIDRD program, there were a small number of agencies. And since that time, the number of agencies has increased dramatically. The NIDRD program at its core has the mission uh, to make lives better. These investments are not made solely to develop new technologies for their own sake. In fact, technologies are useful because they make people's lives better. When you think about the past 30 years of the NIDRD program, we've seen the emergence of so many multi-billion dollar industries in networking, in information technology, social media, devices, laptops, mobile phones, uh, but it goes so much deeper than that. If you look at all the things that have come out, the internet, cell phones, it all started from a government investment in some crazy idea with some purpose that then evolved into a public good. Think of computing's impact on our transportation systems, healthcare, access to education, entertainment. All of that has translated into an economic growth engine that has been unprecedented. There's an enormous pride that the agencies in the NIDRD program take in fostering that kind of research that has led to these transformational technologies that we live with every day today. The National Coordination Office is pivotal in the success of the NIDRD program because they provide the staffing functions to enable this integration across different agencies. But the work is done largely in the interagency working groups, or IWGs. These are staff-level convening entities. These are the people who are actually making decisions about programmatic investments for their agencies. And now we have new interagency working groups, so the program continues to evolve. If I think of academia, government, and private industry, each of the organizations as a whole brings a different set of skills to solving the world's problems through innovation and research. When you actually interact with others and you see how smart people are investing their resources and you can compare notes, you learn from each other and you can also co-invest together. I think that that's been an indispensable role of what NITRO does in terms of coordination across agencies. I do feel that my own research has benefited from the collaboration of the agencies. So my focus area in research is robotics, specifically healthcare robotics. And what I focus on is how do we design robots for therapy and intervention for children with special needs. I would not be able to do what I was able to do across the lifeline of my research unless the federal agencies have been able to collaborate. We owe it to the taxpayer to try to maximize the effectiveness of the funds that are being invested by the federal government on their behalf. And so the NIDRD program is a mechanism that allows us to do that. They say that it takes a village, right, to, to get things done. And I think in the world of information technology and computation is a good example. The more efficient we are, the more collaborative we are, the better outcomes we get. I think NIDRD, as successful as it's been, should not rest on its laurels. The next decade is more important than ever, and it'll be more challenging than ever. So a central theme moving forward is not only to advance science and technology, but to be much more sophisticated about its governance and how we're going to make choices about the relationship of technology and humans and society. So it is very important that our government continues to invest in solutions and innovations and in research so that we still maintain a competitive edge around innovation. How we start today 
thinking about where we're gonna be 20, 30 years from now. That's really the goal. And being strategic today in our investments so that when we get to that future, we have the tools that we need to meet that future. everyone for joining us today, both in person and online. Really happy to have everybody here. Um, so I'd like to take a moment of silence to start um, for all the tragedies <laughs> that hits home. <laughs> um, all the tragedies that have happened in our country, in particular the one that happened yesterday in Texas. Okay, thank you very much. Um, help calm me down a little bit too. <laughs> um, so on behalf of my, of my, on behalf of my NIDRA colleagues, the organizing committee, the Computing Community Consortium, I want to welcome everyone to the symposium today. Um, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program, or NIDRD. And I'm Cami Roberts, Director of the National Coordination Office for NIDRD and co-chair of the NIDRD subcommittee. My NIDRD co-chair, Margaret Martinosi, the Assistant Director for Computer and Information Science and Engineering at National Science Foundation, could not join us today, but we will hear a little bit from her early, later this afternoon um, in a video. I'm excited to start the symposium by introducing Dr. Alondra Nelson, who performs the duties of the Director of the White House of Office of Science and Technology Policy, or OSTP, playing a key role in the implementation of policies that will restore the trust in government through scientific integrity and evidence-based policymaking. She's the first woman of color and the first social science, scientist to lead OSTP as we advance the Biden-Harris administration's priorities in science and technology. We are extra grateful to Dr. Nelson, who is also the OSTP Deputy Director for Science and Society, because she'll be back later this afternoon to moderate our panel on how technology can benefit society. So now as we open today's symposium marking NIDRD's 30th anniversary of innovation and collaboration, please join me in welcoming Dr. Nelson. Good morning, everyone. Um, you know, as I was uh, reviewing my remarks last night, um, I was, you know, at a loss uh, for words about what happened um, with yesterday's massacre in Texas. Um, for most of my career, like many of you, uh, I have been first and foremost a teacher, um, and a classroom is, for many reasons, a sacred space. Um, and so to learn of children being killed at a school, uh, it, it takes my breath away. Um, and as I was talking to a colleague on the way here, um, many of us have had experiences in classrooms. We grew up in classrooms where what occurred yesterday, we couldn't even have imagined ever happening in a classroom that we attended. It is devastating, um, and devastating most of all, to uh, the parents and loved ones of the 19 fourth graders um, and two teachers uh, who were tragically lost yesterday. Um, so to begin this morning, I, I just wanted to be honest uh, about, um, you know, the fact that I'm struggling to really articulate what needs to be articulated, which is that what happened yesterday was not inevitable, um, and it is uh, indeed unacceptable. I know that we have to, uh, as a nation, as colleagues, um, keep fighting for a safer and more just society. Um, and as President Biden said last night, um, it's time to turn uh, our pain into action. Uh, and he added that we must act, we have to act. But right now, today, this morning, um, as you know, as Cami shared as well, I think is hard for all of us. And I just wanted to begin uh, this day by acknowledging that. As Cami noted, uh, I have the privilege of leading the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, or OSTP, where we work to maximize the benefits of science and technology to advance health, prosperity, security, environmental quality, and justice for all Americans. 
And today, we are here to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program, otherwise known as NIDRD. So I want to thank Cami for her introduction, for her leadership, and for having me here today with all of you. To Cami and everyone at NIDRD, congratulations on reaching this milestone. We at OSTP are tasked by Congress and by President Biden to harness the power and possibilities of science and technology, not just for today or for tomorrow, but for decades to come. To meet the challenges of the present while reimagining what our nation can and should look like in the future. And for 30 years, shortly before Congress passed the High Performance Computing Act, which launched what we now know as the NIDRD program, OSTP looked to the future and published a report on grand challenges and high performance computing and communications. Uh, among other things, the report said, quote, high performance computing and computer communications networks are becoming increasingly important to scientific advancement, economic competition, and national security. The technology is reaching the point of having a transforming effect on our society, industries, and educational institutions, closing quote there. Looking back on those words of 30 years ago, I think our predecessors could only have dreamed of how transformative these technologies would actually become. From empowering us to join a work meeting or attend school while sitting at our kitchen tables, to computers that can learn to translate languages and identify the likelihood of cancers and patients. One person who imagined this future, perhaps better than some of us, was the High Performance Computing Act's author and champion, then Senator and later Vice President Al Gore. A few months before Congress passed what almost everyone referred to as the Gore Bill, he wrote that, quote, such machines will reshape human civilization even more quickly and more thoroughly than did the printing press, close quote. He envisioned a future of digital libraries, a future of international research collaborations where scientists around the world could work together on projects in real time, a future in which, quoting him again, a scientist or an engineer designing a product could immediately transfer a design to the manufacturer, who in turn could transfer it instantly to computer-operated machines ready to turn the idea into reality. That's the future that NIDRD was intended to help create full of things that are now so real, we can hardly imagine a future without them. When we reflect on what technology was capable of 30 years ago, the changes we've experienced are indeed astounding. Over the last 30 years, supercomputing processing power grew from gigaflops to teraflops to petaflops, such that today's top supercomputers are over one million times more powerful than those of the early 1990s and we routinely link together hundreds of thousands of computers and data centers to work on tasks from cloud computing uh, and other uses. Over the last 30 years, network transformation speeds accelerated from kilobits per second to megabits to gigabits and now even terabits per second. High speeds that typically haven't been accessible for all of America but soon will be as President Biden and Vice President Harris are ensuring that every home in America can access affordable high-speed internet. Over the last 30 years, global internet usage exploded from roughly 100 gigabytes per day to some 150 million gigabytes per second. Meanwhile, the number of people online has grown from just a few million in mostly wealthy countries to more than five billion people in all countries around the world. And along the way, innovation at this scale has brought even more attention to efficiency and equity, recognizing the climate impacts of technology use and the need for technology to include and benefit everyone. Throughout those 30 years, what began as the High Performance Computing and Communications Program, or NIDRD, played a critical role in enabling, for instance, research at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, where one of the first widely used web browsers was born, supporting a national research and education network, later a national information infrastructure, what then Pres Vice President Gore called the Information Superhighway, and coordinating federal research and development funding and computing network and information technologies that were foundational to the connected world we have today. 
Part of what has made this all possible is that NIDER doesn't just coordinate research and development on networks, it is a network itself. At its core, NIDER is about people working together across more than two dozen member agencies and another 60 participating agencies to make stride in technology innovation and discovery. Because it takes all of us, all of our different skills, diverse experiences, areas of expertise to create transformational technologies. And it's this collaborative nature that makes the NIDER network work. As the first of several national coordination offices that are overseen by OSTP and the National Science and Technology Council, NIDERD has been a model that we've used to advance progress in other areas, from research on global warming and climate change to nanotechnology, and more recently to quantum information sciences and technology. As members of NIDERD work to research and uh, develop technology that changes our world, we too must change to ensure that we're approaching this work in ways that benefit all individuals and all communities in America. That means advancing equity in technology and technology for equity. Because we recognize there is a powerful intersection between technology and society. Where diversity can drive discovery and where technology can level the playing field for underserved and underrepresented communities. I'm glad to say that as NIDART enters its fourth decade, it continues to evolve and adapt to keep America on the cutting edge. From coordinating efforts to establish artificial intelligence research institutes across the country, to standing up a new agency working group to research the challenges posed by misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, and propaganda online. To last year creating a STEM for All portal to help bring more people into federal science, technology, engineering, and math careers. So that students, educators, and early career researchers can find jobs, internships, scholarships, and other training opportunities in government. Given all of this transformative change over the last 30 years, we can only imagine what will happen over NIDER's next 30 years. And today, we'll explore what that future holds in the areas of computing at scale, networking and security, artificial intelligence and machine learning, privacy and the Internet of Things, and how technology can benefit society. On all of these issues and more, I look forward to seeing where NIDERD will take all of us, and congratulations again on this remarkable anniversary. It is now my honor to introduce my friend and colleague, the director of the National Science Foundation, Dr. Seth Uraman Panchanathan. As a computer scientist and engineer, Dr. Ponch's scientific contributions have brought advancements in human-centered computing and a multitude of technologies that help people every day. And while he isn't able to be with us in person today, he has sent a short video, video message for us. And so with that, I will pass the mic to Dr. Ponch. Hello everyone. I'm so glad we are all here to celebrate 30 years since the signing of the High Performance Computing Act, which laid the groundwork for the extraordinary efforts of what we know today as a networking and information technology research and development program, also known as a NITRD program. 30 years ago, the Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program began coordinating federal investments at the frontiers of computing. Today, the NITRD program organizes over $7 billion worth of investments in research and development, committed to advancing technologies across more than 25 federal departments, agencies, and offices. NSF has co-led the NITRD program for three decades and reminds us of the incredible power of long-standing partnerships and the societal benefits that such partnerships bring to our nation. The NIDRD program continues to benefit our country by enabling a broad interagency approach to tackling some of computing and communications greatest challenges of the 21st century. The National Artificial Intelligence Research Institutes serve as an example of this interagency approach to harnessing the potential of computing and communications throughout multiple sectors in our society. Artificial intelligence is one of the most important industries of the future. It is already part of people's daily lives 
and it is only going to become more integrated into how we live and work. NITRE, NSF, and industry partners have worked to stitch together 18 different AI institutes across 40 states and the District of Columbia. These AI institutes represent an investment of more than $350 million dedicated to accelerating AI research and workforce development. AI has a powerful impact on workers, and these institutes address the potential risks such as algorithmic biases, job loss, and identifies the need for professional training focused on the future of the American workforce and the increasing interface between AI technology and human intelligence. And the multidisciplinary, multi-institutional research approach these institutes instill will further advance our understanding and development of AI initiatives across universities, federal agencies, industry, and nonprofits. America's technological leadership depends on advancing our IT and networking capabilities. The future of economic prosperity, national security, health, innovation, and so many other sectors is determined by the progress and expansion of research and development in IT. Most importantly, our technological leadership and advancements in networking and IT are only possible when we utilize and empower collaboration and partnerships across our federal agencies, industry, and academia. Innovation and ideas are fueled by strong partnerships. And I'm so proud to be able to acknowledge the extraordinary work that has been made possible through the Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program. This program continues to evolve to address the most important issues of our time. And I'm very excited for another three decades of successful partnerships and programs. Thank you and congratulations to everyone whose efforts have made this milestone possible. Thank you, Alondra, for joining us this morning to open NIDRD Symposium. We appreciate the quick look at networking over the last 30 years and your inspiration for an equitable future. We look forward to seeing you again this afternoon for more discussion on technology and society. Thanks also to Ponch for providing an overview of the role NIDRD has played in NSF programs and expressing the powerful impact that coordination and collaboration have on our economic prosperity, national security, health, and innovation. We are grateful for NSF's continued support of the NIDRD program. For the past three decades, NIDRD has been at the frontier of computing, networking, data, and software that has led to many breakthroughs that we take for granted today. From weather modeling to auto manufacturing, from agriculture to health, from the mobile phone to advancing the understanding of human diseases like COVID-19, we can all agree that IT innovation is critical to the research, design, and production of tomorrow's discoveries. We all understand the impact of federal R&D programs, but how do we actually measure the impact? It's complicated because the delay in the transition from, from R&D into use and to achieve trackable metrics can be years or even decades. Typically, the agency has moved several evolutions down the research path before the initial impact is even measurable. However, recent agency, agency initiatives strive to speed this transition have gained prominence, building upon the unique U.S. innovation ecosystem that brings together the strengths of federal agencies, academia, industry, and nonprofits. In fact, quantifying the impact of IT R&D on the nation's economy has been occurring since shortly after the founding of the NIDRD program. Next slide. Okay. <laughs> the reports, commonly known as the tire tracks, have been developed by the Computer Science and Telecommunications Board of the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine first published in 1995, and most recently updated in 2020 to include emerging technologies, the tire tracks report provides a clear link between IT R&D and the creation of new IT industries. The linkage from IT R&D to IT innovations to economic se sectors that, transform, that are transformed by these innovations emphasizes that government-funded research translates into industry success stories. I don't know about you, but my first thought for impact for IT R&D is not the NFL or John Deere. Economically, the story is just as compelling as IT intensive industries contribute nearly 10.2% or more than $2.1 trillion to the overall US gross domestic product in 2020. I encourage you to find the CSTB report because it's sort of hard to read up here and learn more about the impact of government R&D on the IT industry. 
the NIDR role in the U.S. innovation ecosystem of coordinating the government-funded extramural and intramural research that leads to these impacts will be evident throughout the discussions today. As you hear about past successes and ideas for future federal R&D, please engage with our panelists during the Q&A so we can gain insight into your IT R&D priorities and activities. At this time, I'd like to recognize the NCO staff who, <laughs> if those in the room could please stand. There are several others. <laughs> there are several others who are unable to join us in person today. Without this incredible team, the NIDR program could not cultivate the connections and impacts that you will hear about throughout the day. From the monthly working group meetings to workshops and community of interest meetings, from workshop reports to national strategic plans to the NIDR's annual supplement to the president's budget, this team's middle name is coordination. Thanks to each, of one, each and every one of you, and I will now introduce Dr. Liz Bradley, Chair of the Computing Community Consortium and Professor at the University of Colorado Boulder to make opening remarks. Yes, so I'd like to add my welcome to all of you, um, those of you who are here in person, as well as those of you who are on the live stream. Thank you very much for joining us. We're really glad that you're here to celebrate with us the 30th anniversary of NIDR. As Cami said, I have the pleasure of chairing the Computing Community Consortium. Could I have the first slide, please? There we go. Um, this is a group of computing researchers from a range of universities and um, um, uh, private sector research labs across the country who work with the computing research community to, well, you can read the mission statement, under the auspices of the Computing Research Association to enable the pursuit of innovative, high-impact uh, computing research that aligns with pressing national and global challenges. So CCC has been really honored to be involved in organizing this important event. And perhaps I should say events, because this is our second attempt. We tried last December thinking COVID would be over by then, um, and that did not work. Uh, so thankfully, things have worked out this time, mostly, although we have had a few last minute changes that are not reflected on your printed program. So if there's a conflict between the website and the printed program, you should believe the website, please. And I, too, would like to acknowledge the hard work of the people who were involved in the planning and execution of this event, beginning with the organizing committee, if I could have the next slide. This group um, just did a tremendous job, fabulous. Also, a great collection of staff in the CRA, the Computing Research Association office, Kat Gill, Haley Gif Griffin, Maddie Hunter, Helen Wright, Sandra Corbett, and Sabrina Spencer as well as uh, Virginia Moore, uh, the NIDRD Program Manager, and Diana Weber, the NIDRD Outreach and Public Affairs Coordinator, and Adrian Baranyuk, the Web Engineer. So the structure of the rest of the day, as uh, Dr. Nelson said, we'll have five topical panels, two in the morning, three in the afternoon. These will revisit transformational advances in the network and IT space over the past three decades. The panelists are drawn from the federal government, from industry, and from academia. They won't just look in the rearview mirror, they'll also uh, look ahead to challenges and opportunities that are on horizon. Between those panels, we'll have a poster session. You can see some of those posters are up already. These are posters from a group of young stars in computing research. They'll remain up through lunch, which will be served at 1245 on the terrace on the uh, one floor up with covered outdoor seating. During the course of the day, we'll also hear remarks from Barbara McQuiston, J.D. Kundu, uh, Aaron, Erwin Jintandani, and then we'll finish with a reception at 6 p.m. on the eighth floor terrace, and time, we'll have the museum to ourselves to explore the wonderful exhibits. Just to foreshadow a point that Erwin will make, um, no photographs in the exhibits, please, okay? So with that, we'll go into the first panel, which is about computing at scale, moderated by my old friend and colleague, Ben Zorn from Microsoft Research. Thank you, Ben. Okay. 